Pain against everybody that's seen and pray for so pray the Lord this time is why you're here seen and pray for Brother Terry. He come pray for Jay. I think he had to go to work, so we pray for him. Uh, Pray for him down off the hill. Pray for Bob Camp coming up. I do pray for him. Pray the Lord just have his way in here. Most of all, pray for the lost. Thank you, pray for him. Lord God, it's again. Timothy, 
2 Timothy chapter number 2. When you find your place, you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. Now, uh, uh, again, that we have so many things to be thankful for. And I just want to thank Him for loving us and Amen. Uh, caring for us even when we don't even deserve it. Amen. And I thank God for all His mercy and grace. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, and I'm going to begin to read in verse number 20. Verse number 20. The Bible says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. And if a man therefore purge himself from thee, he shall be a vessel of unto honor. Sanctified and meant for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do not they do a generous strife. And the servant of the Lord must not just must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, in instructing those that oppress themselves. Uh, if God per peradventure will give them repentance uh, to the no acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who are who are taking them captive and it, by him and his will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come tonight for your son. Lord, I thank you for this day and this opportunity to be here tonight. God, I know there's a lot of places we could be, but I am glad that here is where we are. And I pray now, dear Heavenly Father, for everything that's going to be said or done tonight. Not my will be done, but thine. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that every word that comes out, Lord, be straight from heaven. Lord, not my words, but thine. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you will attain to the hearts of people tonight. Lord, we will prepare our hearts, be receptive unto the word. God, that we might be able to fall on, on good ground. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, for the ground that's here tonight, Lord, that may be tough. Lord, the ground that's here tonight that may be hard. Lord, I pray that you'll till it up. God, that they might be able to receive the seed. The latest guys are directing this Bible camp coming up this week, Lord. I pray your heavenly Father you'll touch it, Lord, beyond measure. God, uh, whatever uh, children you send out, God, whatever adults are able to help, I pray your heavenly Father that you'll just see to them and give them the, the what they need for this week. God, I pray that you'll take care of the weather. I pray, God, that you'll take care of all the, me the, the needs that need to be met. Most of all, dear Lord, I pray for the preaching. God, every preacher that comes to preach, God, you'll just touch them, Lord. Give them liberty, God, to be able to share the gospel. Now, Lord, I pray for the meeting tonight here, Lord, whatever needs to be said or done would be. God, we give you the glory. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. I was saying the Lord put this uh, little thought on her mind coming to church this morning. Uh, and I was thinking here, you know, I, 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 if I was to go around the church tonight, I, I would bet that most of us here tonight, or at least the majority of us tonight, would probably consider ourselves... Uh, Pretty good Christians, amen? Uh, I mean, look, we're here tonight on a Sunday night when we could be somewhere else, amen? We consider ourselves, and, you know, I would even consider you a, a pretty good Christians as well. Uh, but the truth is, uh, whether we be good Christians or not, uh, it, it's easy for us to fall into the snares of the devil. Amen. And I got this little thought on our mind this morning about being aware of the snares, amen? Uh, uh, if you don't know what a snare is, snare is. A snare is a trap that is set to trap uh, that trappers use to be able to snare or capture or catch uh, something that whatever they're after, whatever they're trying to get. Uh, but let me just tell you, the devil is pretty good at what he does. Amen. Uh, 
The devil is really good at what he does, and if you don't believe me, just look around. Amen? Uh, not through your eyes, but through the eyes of Christ. Uh, we preach this morning to love them like Jesus. Amen? Uh, and, and if we really want to be honest with ourselves, we're going to have to look at the world as Jesus sees the world. Uh, and we're going to have to look around and see what all is going on. Uh, it's easy uh, for us as Christians sometimes to live our lives and make excuses uh, for the reasons that we participate in the things that the world participates in. Amen? Uh, uh, now look, I, I think God wants us to have fun. I think there's all kinds of ways of having fun. Uh, and I think we can make a mockery out of anything. Amen? Uh, but I also think it's important that we realize of just how tricky uh, that the devil is. So, now look, when uh, you know... Uh, this thing uh, uh, that the devil is, uh, how, I know some of us here tonight, we probably remember uh, uh, Wiley Coyote, right? Uh, he, he ordered most of his traps and snares from the Acme Company. Uh, come in with a big stamp and a sign on the side of them or what they said, amen? Uh, and un uh, unfortunately, unlike cartoons a lot of times, amen? Uh, uh, unlike part, uh, like a Wiley Coyote, there wasn't a sign pointing to trap here, amen? Uh, they, there's not a big sign it's going to tell you that you're getting ready to fall in. Now, hey, but, but, but fortunately for us, if we are children of God, we do have a Heavenly Father that warns us of the things. I think it's very important that, that we pay attention to these things. And that's what God was talking about right here. That's what Paul was writing unto Timothy here. And he told him about uh, about the house and how it had some vessels in there, uh, uh, how they were gold and silver and other things. Uh, to, uh, but he also said, look, uh, the one that, in other words, if you dedicate those things to God and dedicate your life unto God, uh, then you can be a worthy vessel. Amen? Uh, uh, but also we need to realize that we need to continue to be on the, on the outlook. Uh, be looking out for the things that the devil is going to set before us. So I think one of the first snares that we need to be aware of uh, is the snare of a half-truth. Amen? Uh, I, I know a lot of us, a lot of times, we like to skirt around the truth. Amen? Uh, uh, but I'm here to tell you today that the most important thing that you can get out is the truth. Amen? Man, I, I, now I'm sure all of us uh, have heard uh, the story of George Washington, amen, I, and we've also probably heard the story uh, that George Washington wore wooden teeth. Some of, surely I'm not the only one. It's good to be saved. Hey, man, y'all don't have to wake up. Uh, y'all ever want me to get done? I'm just going to keep going till you wake up. That's why you hear it anyway. Yeah. Look, uh, there we go. Hey, man, uh, we've all heard it said that George Washington had more wooden teeth. Uh, well, in fact, he did not have his own teeth. Hey, man, uh, he did wear dentures. Uh, but the fact is, he did not wear wooden teeth. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was made out of gold and porcelain, to be honest with you. If you study, amen. I, that's right, amen. Do something for your country, amen. You might be able to get a little gold teeth through, amen. I, hey, live for Jesus. He might give you a little blessing too, amen. I, here's what I want to tell you. That was just a half truth. It didn't have no, it didn't have no consideration over what we're going to talk about tonight. I, but it's a half truth, and most of the world is bought hook, line, and sinker. I, hey, I'm going to tell you what the devil does. I, the devil does exactly the same thing. I, you want to know what a half truth is? Uh, it's a whole lie, amen. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, it, it ain't exactly what they say it is. Uh, if it's a half truth, uh, they're not giving you the whole truth, amen. Uh, just like when you go down here to the to the uh, fast food restaurant uh, and you buy one of these plant-based burgers, amen. Uh, it's supposed to taste like beef, right, amen. Uh, but you know what they're doing? Uh, they're lying to you because I ain't never eat a plant that tastes like a cow. Have you? Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not to be seen, not to be believed. Hey, no devil will do everything he can hey, to convince you and tell you that it's all right, that he can lie to you. And I'm going to tell you what lies are like. Lies are just like potato chips. Amen. You can't eat just one, right? You can't tell just one. You tell one lie, you got to tell another lie to cover that lie up. Just 
the way a lot works. Yeah. By nature, amen. Uh, hey, don't devil will lie to us. Uh, and he'll tell you a half truth. Uh, he'll pack things up. Uh, hey, I want you to know tonight... Uh, it's important uh, hey, that we know exactly uh, who Jesus is. Uh, the world has their own mind, has their mind made up uh, about who Jesus is in their mind. Uh, hey, we have a lot of half Jesuses running around. Amen. Uh, look, you know what? I stationed this afternoon. Uh, there's so many of us tonight. Uh, they believe so many different things. And we can go on and on down the list. But I wrote a few things down. I got to think, you know, we, all, we see a lot of election signs coming up. Amen? I, Melissa and I have talked about it a lot. You know the Republicans have their Jesus. I mean, he cuts taxes. Amen? Lord, I just need you to cut taxes. Lord, I just need you to make it easier. You know the Democrats, they have their Jesus. They're praying that Walmart and Wall Street all crumble, amen, because they don't believe in capital system. Yeah. Hey, you know what? There's all kinds of Jesuses. There's a touchdown Jesus. You know that? Lord, help me to run faster. Help me to jump higher. Help my team to win. Hey man, I guarantee all of us uh, we, we've got we've got our own version of what the Lord is. Uh, hey, we got we, we got our very own therapeutic Jesus. We got our healing Jesus. Uh, Lord, heal me, heal this one, heal that one. Uh, well, listen, I want you to understand something. All those things are just a half truth. Uh, we need to realize that we need a whole Jesus. Uh, we don't need those Jesuses, uh, but we need the Christ, uh, the Son of God, uh, the Holy One. Uh, I, 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 I am, I am I, the Alpha and the Omega. I pay the beginning and the end. I, not only is He all things, uh, but He is everything. Amen. I, I don't want to believe a half truth. I, hey, that God loves me, I, but yet He ain't going to judge me. I, I need you to understand I, that the God that loves you I, will judge you. Amen. 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 That's the way it is. Yeah. You need to realize what God is and who He is. We live in such a, a world today where we've got so many people that are scared to death to preach against sin, afraid people's going to leave. I'd rather you walk through that door, go out that door and never come back after hearing the truth then I had to have to look you in the eye on judgment day Amen. and say, look, I'm sorry I didn't give you the truth. Amen. Hey, I'll tell you right now, I want the house to be full. I, I want it to be full of people. I, I want it to be full of sinners getting saved. I, I want it full of Christians getting right. I, I want it full of people I, living and loving Jesus. I, hey, if we want to get to those, we're going to have to right buy in uh, to the whole truth. I, nothing but the truth. Uh, let so help us God. God, uh, because the truth, uh, that's what's going to set you free. Uh, and that's what will change them. Uh, that's what will make us different uh, than everybody else. Uh, not buying to what the world's got to sell, but buying into what Jesus has to give freely. Amen. 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 Yeah. Half true. This world today has got the world think the devil's got the world today thinking they can't do it. Yeah. I wish they would realize they can't do it. Right, amen. But Jesus can. Yes. Amen. Yes. It never was up to me to do it. It wasn't up to me to make it on my own. Now, that's why Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, buying half truths. I tell you, we need to believe in the one and the only one. We need to believe in the story. I tell you what we need to believe. They want you to believe part of the Bible, but they don't want you to believe all the Bible. Amen. Look, we was talking, we see so much stuff today about pro-choice and pro-life and all that. I'm for both. I'm for both, amen. You say, what do you mean, preacher? I believe everybody ought to have the right to choose. You ought to be able to choose to do the right thing to start with. Amen. 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 Look, I understand that there are medical reasons. Uh, there are medical conditions uh, that, uh, that cause some of the things that uh, uh, lead up to an abortion and uh, things happening. Uh, I'm fully aware of those things. Uh, but there's a lot of it. Uh, as we've already given you statistics, uh, almost 95% of them uh, are bad choices. Amen. 
Lord. If you consistently make the wrong choice, I just assume to take your choice. Amen. If it's going to help you, here's what I say that. You take a child. Do you see that little fella right there? Ain't he precious? Keep him for a day. I love him. This thing right here, it's wild. I mean, it's like a wild man. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you continually let that thing down in the floor, you know what he's going to continually do? Make bad choices. Amen? He's going to make bad choices. You don't believe me? Look at the knots on his head. Hey, man, you don't believe me? Look at these other youngins back here. Knots all over them. And meaner snakes. Hey, man, look. I talk about how mean he is. I know he ain't the meanest one here. Come, come on, mamas. Lord. You don't think your kids is the meanest one here? You believe in a half lie. You believe in a half truth. Amen. I told you not to fall into that standard. Amen. Uh, look here. That's what God does for us. Amen. Uh, he cuts off choice. Uh, why? Because we make ill choices. Uh, we make bad choices. Uh, I'm for pro-life. Amen. Uh, I'm for the life of the innocent, of the unborn. Uh, I'm for life. I'm for pro-life. Uh, the life that died, they gave his life for me on Calvary. Uh, I'm for pro-life. Uh, hey, you might accept the real Jesus. Uh, hey, and know what life is uh, and have it more abundant. Amen. Amen. I'm not just for heart proof. Amen. I want you to know all of it. I want you to know every bit of it. Hey, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That's who we need to get back to. Christ is not. Here's what most people view Christ. He's a reflection of the mood that they're in that day. Amen. They view Him kind of like a spare tire. Or here's what they here's what it really boils down to. You don't want to have 10 and 1 both the dudes. You probably got 11 and 1, 12 and 1, 15 and 1. <laughs> Something like that, don't you? You got one of them multi tools. Some of the people carry them on their sides, you know, the leatherman has got all their things in. All of them work fairly decent to a certain extent. But none of them work to the full potential of what the real tool does. Amen. I mean, I'm just getting there. If you take out the straight screwdriver and you put any pressure on it whatsoever, I'm talking about you're going to have to get down on it. Amen. And tighten and loosen the screw. You know what's getting ready to happen? One, two, or three things. One, either that thing's getting ready to twist or break. Two, you just get ready to slip, you're going to break your nut buster or knuckles. Or three, you're going to do both. Amen. Hey, that's what I want to tell you. That's why we need the real deal. Amen. That's why we need Jesus. Not just some half lame, half baked up thing that suits the needs that we have at the moment. I'm talking about a God who can do all things. Amen. That's who they need to hear about. Yeah. Not. No, just part of it. Amen. If you see Jesus or anything other than the Son of God, you know what, what the world sees Jesus as? A fix for their need. Yeah. A fix for their crisis. To me, I may be, I may be speaking out of turn. We see all kinds of things happening in our world. Roe versus weight. All Roe versus Wade did. It did. Look, I'm glad that they overturned it. Amen. But all that Roe versus Wade did was just say that it's not in our Constitution that you have a right to an abortion. That's right. That's that. it, since it's not in our Constitution, you know what it's left up to? Left up to the states. Exactly. Roe versus Wade. Let me just tell you something. I wish people would understand that they need Jesus in every state. Amen. Amen. I, I wish they'd realize uh, that God is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, and they need Him to make any decision. Uh, they need Him in the center of their life. Uh, hey, no matter who they are or what walk of life they come from. Right, God loves every one of them. There's something else we need to be very, another snare we need to be 
very cautious of is the snares of preconception. Do you know what that means? That's just a fancier way of saying be careful of judging a book by its cover. Amen. We've often heard that said. Don't judge a book by its cover. How many times have we judged a book by its cover? Far too often. I'll, I'll, I'll use this example. Every one of us have made an impulsive purchase of something because of the way it looked. Because of what we saw. Man, you want to know how I know that? Because they have whole channels that are dedicated to nothing but selling something. Uh -huh. Amen. Let me just tell you this. Everything you see, you cannot believe. Amen. Uh, just because it appears to be one thing uh, does not mean that that's what it's going to be. Be, a, be. be aware of the snares that the devil lies for you. Right? That it lays out there for you. The devil wants to paint a pretty picture. Let me ask you this. Uh, have you ever seen an alcohol or beer commercial uh, where people were lying in the ditch wrecked? Uh, do you ever see a family that's headed to the emergency room because uh, some drunk done about killed every one of them? Uh, have you seen families it's tore apart now, because of a drug dealer. Now, have you seen all this stuff? No, because the devil will lie to you. Now, he'll paint up a pretty picture. Now, yeah. He'll tell you it's all good. Now, hey, well, I'll tell you what. Now, he don't show you the whole story. Now, be careful uh, of what you see. Amen. Be careful of little eyes, what you see. Careful of little ears, what you hear. May not be all what you got, right? what you after. Look, we see pictures of people living the high life, don't we? We see people, we have aspirations of desires to become rich and famous. Do you know what rich and famous does to most people? I can't speak from experience, but I can tell you this. Are you famous? Famous, you know. Yeah, I'm a legend in my own mind, I know. Amen. Amen. But I can tell you this much, even becoming a legend in your own mind, you know what that does to you? It gives you a big head, son. <laughs> Amen. Do you know what everybody else thinks when they see you? Good Lord, look at the head on that fellow. <laughs> they don't think of love. They don't think of the rest of you like you think. Amen. Uh, I'm here to tell you what the old devil does. Uh, he'll paint up a pretty picture with li lavish uh, lifestyles. Uh, hey, when they don't really when they crash out or hit rock bottom. Now, hey, I can tell you it's important now, hey, that we look and see what God would have for us. Uh, fame and fortune might be in your future. Uh, hey, but make sure uh, it's what God wants for you uh, and not what you and the flesh want. Right. Hey, man, we got to be careful of preconceptions. Here's what I was thinking today. I remember, I thank God, thank God, that myself or none of my family that I know of are big gamers. Now you might be here and you might be a gamer. I mean, you just spend a lot of time on video games. But I remember years ago when people started talking about those things. And they started, they would say this. Now listen, I thought they were full of it. Man, that's going to lead to bad decisions. That's going to lead to bad things. You say, well, I got my family plays video games. Well, good for you and your family. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Well, I'm going to tell you where I'm getting to this. And the Lord gave me this today. I remember when all this murder and stuff started on these video games. I mean, the boy, have you ever watched some of these video games today? I mean, hey, boy, I'm going to Have you ever wondered? We had a lot of school shootings, right? Have you ever wondered why people can go into a place and blow the place up like it's nothing. Not expecting any retaliation in return. 
Let me just tell you, you'll find, if you'll do a study, uh, you'll find out what the majority of these uh, started out on a video game. Amen? Uh, hey, because you know what it does to our youth's mind and to our adults' minds? Uh, it takes their minds and it takes away uh, the reality of punishment. Uh, it takes away the reality uh, uh, of consequences. Amen? Uh, now, listen, I'm not saying that everybody that does that will end up shooting somebody. Uh, but what I can tell you is this. Uh, be careful of the snares that the devil lays for you. Because it may seem simple. It may seem innocent unto you. But let me just tell you, I'd rather my children and grandchildren know there's consequences for their actions than to have everything they want and grow up to be a hoodlum or a murderer. Amen. Amen. Yes. <coughs> I tell you, be careful. What the snares of the devil and what preconceptions look like. Here's what I want to tell you. In the very beginning of time, in the very beginning of the Bible, I'm going to look at Genesis. You'll find out over there of how fallen man started. How did fallen man get started? With a half life and a misconception. Best preconception. What did it say the devil was? The most subtle or the most beautiful animal of the family. Look at that big simple ugly animal come out there. I'm talking about I, you ever seen one of them old duck bill classes? You know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> too old? You know what a rat is? Would you even really think a rat brought you? No. Why do you think the devil didn't use a rat? Why do you think the devil didn't use one of them old ant ears? Hey man, that old long goofy looking nose. Hey man, exactly. Exactly. You know that's why he used the devil. That's why he chose the serpent. Because it was the most subtle, the most beautiful thing. The old devil will paint up a pretty picture. Next thing you know, you'll be just like Adam and Eve. You'll be eating of the other's forbidden fruit. Hey, your children. Hey, with the world, we may think everybody else is doing it. Everything's going to be okay. It ain't hurting them. Hey, yours can be the one that it hurts. Well, hey, what the Lord told me a long time ago when I my children were small. I understand that our children and our grandchildren will try things we do not want them to do. And we do not want them to try. This just like having a candy jar. Now there's some, there's some money in there. I know you're going to try something. I know that you're going to get something. Do you think it's my job to say, here, get you one? No, I ain't getting that. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was going to smack your hand. If you didn't, he would. I didn't know why. You know why he didn't reach in there? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, I'm not saying John has ever took money out of office, but, but I will promise you. All of us have done things that y'all did not want us to do. Amen. And all of us who are serving God, you didn't reach in there for a reason. You didn't reach in there for two reasons. One, you thought I was going to hit you. And if I could have caught you quick enough, I probably would. I was going to hit you in my hand with you because I knew I would make something that was good. But the second reason was you knew that God would get a hold of you. If you got past me, you knew you wasn't getting past him. You know why? Because he's tried it before. I'm not saying he brings it. I got careful. He brings it. Amen. But here's what I can tell you about this. It's our job as parents to do our best to keep the lid on the jaw. Amen. Now, best we can do, they're going to sneak in, they're going to get behind our backs, and they're going to get some out. But it's not because we let them try. Amen. Don't be confused. Don't get tripped up. 
by the preconception or the knowledge or what it looks like on the outside that it'll be okay. Trust me. You want to make sure, amen, of what you're letting your children have. I remember as a child, man, I love chocolate. You like chocolate? Mine, Riley's favorite candy bar is a Hershey bar. Nothing but chocolate. I love Hershey bar. My favorite thing. Y'all like chocolate? Like, here's a, <clears throat> this is going to be for the older generation. I'm including the sales in older generation. How many of you ever in your childhood took an ant's lax because you thought it was chocolate? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you look like it, I uh, only reason you did it is because mama put it up. Yeah, it uh, you didn't have none. Look, I'll guarantee you, if you could have got your hands on it, look, it went right in that mouth. Amen? You want to know what the old devil does? He does exactly the same thing. Now look, Hershey and x lax they don't make chocolate the same way. Just so, just so you know, Amen. Everybody know what it is. If you know what it's like, just say Amen. Amen. Good. I don't have to explain that. Look, they two big differences, and there's two big differences in good and right, right, good and evil. There's two big differences between God and Satan. There's two big differences uh, in following the Lord uh, and half-heartedly following the Lord. Amen? Uh, hey, I said be careful of the snares that the old devil lays out there. Uh, I'll tell you something else. Uh, be careful of the snare uh, of the spiritual pedigree. Amen? Uh, you know what the Pharisees thought? Uh, <clears throat> they thought because they had Abraham as their father, uh, they was good to go. Let me just tell you something. Because your mom and dad went to church. Served in the church, work in the church, just because you go to Sunday school, just because you've been around the power of God, just because you sung in the choir, just because you sing in the youth choir, amen, uh, just because you go down to Sunday school class and you know all about Noah's Ark, uh, just because you go down there and you know all about Daddy with a lion's den, uh, you know what that means? Uh, that means you just been paying a little bit of attention, uh, but you still don't have the relationship with God, amen? Uh, I can tell you what make matters. Uh, Bible tells us that God uh, could call on the rocks uh, hey, to be children under Abraham, uh, Hey, but I'll tell you what he done. Now, he chose us uh, to save us. Uh, hey, that we might worship him. Uh, that we might follow him. Uh, and that we might get after it uh, and start working for him. Amen. Hey, man, be careful of that snare. Don't get caught up in just the old going to church. Amen. Hey, man. Uh, I know so many people. I, I talk to people all the time. Well, I go to church. I go to church. Let me ask you something. There's a difference in going to church and participating in church. You can come sit on a pew. You can come listen to some crazy preacher preach for a little while and go home, still die and go to hell. You can come here and be saved and be the same Christian today as you was 10 years ago. Amen. How many of you like that? Amen. Amen. He is the bread of life. Right? Amen. He's the bread of life. I want him to renew day in, day out. How many of you eat 10-year-old bread? I don't eat that. I don't eat 10 days. Would you? Uh, I'm worthy of being still and just so you know. So. <laughs> Look, I, I know I ain't eating. You know why? Well, I say that. Because you eat bread long enough, it stuff starts growing on you. Amen? Amen. You say, he don't go back. Well, listen, let me tell you something. He said, daily take up your cross. Uh, he's our daily bread. Amen. Uh, we ought to eat of him daily. Uh, hey, I say, don't miss me. Uh, miss, uh, think just because you go to church, that's all you need to do. I'll tell you what else we need. To beware the snare of indecision. Not making decisions. What I mean. 
I'm not talking about just regular decisions. If it was regular decisions, we, a lot of us, a lot of times, we'd go a long time never get nothing done. Bible tells us the story of how God's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. We've heard that story. Say amen. Amen. Glory to God, y'all sleeping on me. I told you I'm going to keep preaching. Y'all going to wake up and have to leave. Look here. Here's the story of the chaff. Y'all know what the story of the chaff really means? In that day, how farmers worked, when they would grow wheat, they would bring that wheat and they'd throw it on the thrashing floor. You know what the thrashing floor was? Here's what they did. They'd take something similar to pitchforks or what we consider a pitchfork. They'd stick it in there and they'd get them a big hoop of it and they'd shake that thing. And they'd shake that wheat until the seeds fell off. And then they'd gather up the wheat, the seeds of the wheat. And then they would take the chaff or the straw that was left and they'd pile it up. And you know what they'd do at the end of it? They'd burn it. They'd burn it until it was consumed all the chaff. The Bible tells us at the end time uh, that God's going to separate the wheat from the tags. Amen. Uh, he's going to separate us out. Uh, and He's going to burn that ta those tares up. Uh, those that do not belong there. Uh, hey, quit waiting around and buying into the snare. Uh, that the devil's told you that you've got enough time. Uh, you've got tomorrow. Uh, you've got next week. Uh, hey, to get things right. Uh, I've got next week to start doing right. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, you've got today and that's all you got. Right. Amen. Amen. I read this uh, story the other day. It's about this uh, assistant preacher, our assistant pastor. He was an associate pastor. And he lived, he was also, not only was he an associate pastor, but he's also an assistant manager in a, 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 a condo, a living complex. And every month he'd pass out a letter about a meeting. And the, 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 the people that owned the company, they'd have a manager's meeting. Every month they went to that meeting and he remembered a story about a, uh, one of the managers who had a tenant. And that tenant, the stories that this guy would tell you, this, this person lived in absolute fear. I mean, just as bad as it can get. Amen. I mean, didn't bath, didn't, I mean, didn't wash nothing, let stuff pile up. Have you ever seen anybody, have you ever, has anybody ever known somebody that was a hoarder? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't, I hope I ain't pointing no fingers. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. All of us, I, I seen I seen something one day maybe it's like this brought this one back to my mind. There was a little thing that said I saw a piece of plastic on the floor. It looks like it came off something important, but I cannot figure out where it goes. So I will put it in the drawer and keep it till the day I die. <laughs> now all of us, I'm sure, are hoarders to some to some point. Some of us with bolts and screws. I guarantee you, we've got a screw bucket. Amen. It's got every kind of screw. I mean, it's got all kinds of stuff in there. Stuff we'll never use. So there we go. But, here's what I want to say about hoarders. Didn't start out with a map. Started out a piece at a time. Do you know what? I was thinking about that person who lived in that field. Probably didn't start out that way. But eventually, just after forsaking and forsaking and putting off and putting off, the field just got worse and worse and worse and probably got to the point that, that they just didn't even care anymore. That's why I say it's important now, to beware the snare of indecision now, of whatever God has for you in your life. Uh, quit avoiding it. Uh, quit putting it off. Uh, quit waiting till tomorrow to start living for Him. Uh, quit waiting till tomorrow to tell that person about the Lord uh, that He's been inquired upon your heart. Uh, 
because it may never get done. It may look like that guy's filthy house. Hey, but I can tell you right now, you can get cleaned up, get out of the snares that you're in, and start walking with God again. Right here tonight, is every head bowed, every eye closed, and the Christian praying every heart shut. Ask him, are you caught up in any of these snares? Are you, can you see those snares coming? Can you see where they're at? Now you're here tonight. I'm not asking you a lot of questions tonight. I just want you to know tonight is your night to get what you need. Whatever it is that's going on in your life, whatever's trapped you or kept you living that same old life, you may have me fooled. Did you know what's going to happen when you get to heaven because you fooled the preacher? You're not going to fool God. You're still going to be the same person you are and done the same things you did. Look, I can love you, care all for you, but unless you receive what God has for you, you're going to continue down the same road. Maybe you're here tonight and maybe you just want to get on this altar and say, Lord, help me to see the snares of what God, what, you, what, what the devil has out there. Help me to avoid them, Lord. It's a good place to come. Altars open for anyone for any reason. There's hundreds of things that I can preach on on the snares of the devil. He'll do it with boys and girls. Love. Listen, I'm going to tell you, be careful of a half-truth. Be careful of a misconception of what it looks like. Make sure it's real. Relationships. All kinds of things tonight. The devil will try to trap you and mess you up. Would you come? Would you come? She's going to play one more verse. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I hope tonight that everybody is saved and everybody is ready to go. I hope you know the Lord is saved. If not, if not, tonight you can get it made right. You can get it made right. Would you come? Would you come? Settle up. The debt's been paid. Get rid of the things, the vessels out of your house. Get rid of the vessels out of this old life that are hindering you. Would you come? But Eddie, you pray for us. Now, the Father, we come to the Lord, the Father, and the Lord, 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 the
And Lord, for this Bible camp, yes. I pray God you'll just bless them. Bless the men of God that come to preach the word of God. God, I pray, Lord, that you'll just touch on it. Old or young, whatever it is. God, that many will come to know Jesus as their Savior. Bless them that come to work in it, God. And not only this, but the Bible school and the Bible can us. The tent meeting and all these things yes. are going on. Revival meeting. And God, I pray there too, you'll help us all to get the help where we can, we can receive revival. And God, you say some brother Terry Carr, the man of God. Yes. And it's time for revival. God, God I just, in this church, I thank you for it, God. And I pray for all you just help us to be alive to everybody around. God, in their lives as well. Lord, to show that they can be out and serve the true and the living God. God, there's nothing like it. And we thank you, God, for caring about it and being my love. Saving us, so giving us Jesus to suffer all that he suffered that we can have life. We give you glory for it all. And God, but for these on the prayer list for both sisters, pray you'll yes. be blessed there. And God, bless <coughs> every one of them. You know the need. And God, you know how to do things. That's best for each one of us. God, we just give you glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We sort of appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody's got a word or a testimony on your heart. <laughs> Hearts and minds is clear. There'll be much in prayer for the services coming up Wednesday night. Wednesday night we're going to be here for prayer meeting and then we'll go out and set up uh, uh, all the tables and stuff. There's a lot of work that has to take place on Wednesday evening to get ready for Thursday morning. So we appreciate all the help that we can get. Most of all, we appreciate your prayers. Do remember Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, we'll have Bible camp going on. We'll be preaching uh, three times a day. Some great men of God. Uh, you don't have to be uh, young in age to come out and enjoy uh, the preaching of the Lord. Uh, I promise you it'll bless your heart. Heart. And if you have any questions, give us a call or a text and we'll just answer what we can. And remember, pray about this thing. If somebody gets saved, shake somebody's hand, tell you love it. God bless.